It was quite a shock when we were informed this week that Possum Bourne had been taken off life support in Dunedin Hospital a few days after his crash on recce at the race for the Sky Hill Climb. It was assumed by most of us that his recovery would simply be a matter of time. Well now, as we mourn his death, it's also time to reflect on an exceptional career, one that will not only remain with us forever, but light the way for others to follow. The possum legend grew out of the lush green hills of New Zealand's North Island. I'll leave the drive on this farm here. Me and my brother used to get Dad's tractor out if we were allowed to use it to get the cows in and we sliding around behind the cows trying to chase them in and I suppose we learned a bit of car control out of that or tractor control or whatever you want to call it but it certainly was the start of learning to drive that's for sure. His early days as an apprentice mechanic were peppered with half-baked inexperienced excursions with his mates. We'd pay our own way, we'd pay for everything, we'd even help him out with tyres just to see the guy get ahead. Um, obviously now the tide's turned a bit and he's a professional rally driver, but even now, I mean, guys would work sort of all night for possum just to see him go well. Peter Bourne wasn't always the consummate driver. His nickname arose from a desperate swerve to avoid a possum, a swerve which rode off his car. But he worked at it. The more he liked it, the harder he tried, the better he drove. I was standing there watching him during the rally and watching him come up the hill and just talking to myself and not realising I was talking to myself and I was like, come on Peter, now around that corner, steady up, now boot it! And Mrs. Irwin said to me, now here's this lady that used to close her eyes when she saw him rally and I didn't realise I was doing it. He was one of the first New Zealand drivers to rally in a Subaru. For some reason, he just took a shine to it. And in 1983, Subaru New Zealand took a shine to him with factory backing. In those days, the Japanese manufacturer was not the powerhouse it is now. But Possum stuck with them, taking third place in the world-class Rally New Zealand in 1987. In the late 80s, this Kiwi in a Japanese car prepared in Switzerland competed in a limited number of overseas events, from Kenya to Argentina to Britain. His name alone attracted attention, and so did his trademark modesty. There's nothing wrong with the car, it's the driver that isn't performing too good at the moment. International recognition grew when Subaru's new Liberty RS arrived for the 1990 Rally New Zealand. Uh, we won a good result, we didn't finish the safari, we didn't finish Argentina, we didn't finish New Zealand last year. The only rally we really finished uh, was Australia. So. That's rally, you can have runs like that and uh, we'd like to change the run to a more positive one with a New Zealand rally. He finished right fifth five. overall and later that year drove to fourth in Rally Australia. You have to push away, you don't learn anything unless you go fast, so you've got to go fast and you just have to accept that you're going to have a bit of a fright now and then. The New Zealand title followed in 1991, a significant year, as Possum resolved to forge a new alliance with Australia. I joined Subaru back in uh, 91. Possum sussed out that I was a former motoring journalist with an interest in motorsports, so uh, I think Possum thought, oh, here's an opportunity. Uh, we basically got, ch got chatting and, um, and we basically then left the event with a, uh, a pro-drive old group, a uh, legacy. Possum was always in control of his team, but that also meant taking responsibility for the results. And even in years like 1992, when mechanical problems plagued him, he never blamed the car when it wasn't the car's fault. And it's really just up to me now. The car's obviously we have, I think, the best car, and all we've got to do is drive it the best and, and do a good job of it, and we should be able to come out with a good result. Possum and Roger Freeth went on in 1993 to score their first international victory in Indonesia on their way to the Asia-Pacific title. By then, he'd forged the reputation for exacting preparation, boundless enthusiasm and total commitment. The limit has been going off in six gear quite a lot, so that's what, 210 goes an hour or something, so that's plenty fast enough for me. <laughs> We've been off the ground a fair bit. Towards the end of that season, his first career crisis. Freeth was killed in a crash during Rally Australia. In 1994, Possum recruited Tony Circum for a successful Asia-Pacific title defence, playing a leading role in the emergence of a future world champion, 22-year-old teammate Richard Burns. Because he hasn't really been up against the world-class competition, they don't really know how 
to view his pace and I hadn't really studied this enough and went there and he beat us by 30 seconds at the end of the rally and I was a little bit surprised so this year I've taken nothing for granted. That respect endured for another decade as Burns became one of Subaru's highest profile drivers and Possum took a different road. Possum and his Subaru Impreza Group A car were lured to Australia in 1996 to match up against the three-time national champion Neil Bates and his Toyota Celica Group A car. No one guessed at the time that it would be the start of a special era in Australian motorsport. A Possum uh, was in a similar position to what I am. He uh, ran his own team, was involved in the preparation of his own cars and, and uh, he competed at obviously at a very high level. And, and from that point of view, we probably had a, a, an incredible lot in common. Possum won in 1996, and six more championships followed. But the most impressive of those was the most recent. The door opened when series leader Ed Ordinsky crashed his Mitsubishi in the second last round in Tasmania. When I was injured in an accident last year, he was uh, you know, the first person to visit me, helped me to the airport the next day, uh, followed up afterwards. He, he did take a lot of care, but it was his professionalism that was quite special. Um, our championship changed to a standard production car formula last year. Possum was driving a car that would no longer be eligible, and it's fair to say he wasn't in favour of that at all, and we used to debate, debate the uh, system a lot. Um, but once it was in, he grabbed it with both hands and became you know, one of the fastest group and drivers in the world, went on to win the championship, went on to go and do the world championship and, and that was a great measure of the man that he was able to put uh, all of his opposition to the new series behind him and get on and dominate it. Possum, not bad, six wins out of 12 in the series, pretty fair too, 50% for you, 50% for everyone else. Yeah, I call that fair. <laughs> yeah. hey, look, you just get in there, I'm doing what I have a passion for, what I love and, and that is driving the car as fast as I can and if that's good enough to win that spot on if someone can beat me, that's fine too. But you just get in and drive your, drive it as hard as you can and fight it all the way. But he had an incredible passion and belief and and interest in his sport, and, and he put 110% in into rallying the entire time. During that marvellous era, Possum never missed a chance to remind the world he was still a force. In 2000, he won his third Asia-Pacific title and repeatedly humbled international teams in Australia and New Zealand's World Rally Rounds, armed with older cars and lesser budgets. Possum is, is you know, the, the most tenacious person I know. Like, uh, we've, we've put ourselves in a corner a few times in events, mainly you know, during competition, where it's not all going your way, you've had some bad luck or made a few mistakes, and, but you know, they're, they're, there's, the prize at the end is, is to win, to win the event, win the championship, whatever. And whenever, you know, when we've had to fight, like really, really give absolutely 110%, then you don't want to be with anybody else but Possum. This year, with Bates returning to the series, Rally's enduring triumvirate was ready to deliver another memorable Australian championship, while Possum's competitive urge drove him to set up a seven-round World Group N campaign. In two months, he'd been to Sweden, back to Western Australia, then New Zealand. Possum was preparing for the Rally of Canberra when he paused, as always, to squeeze a relatively small New Zealand event into his airtight international schedule. The race for the Sky Hill Climb was still his favourite. He died supporting the people and places that gave birth to a remarkable career. He'd only just turned 47.